Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life, Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard, directed by Mac Benoff, and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good, it's refreshing, and the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. Now, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, <laughs> today we celebrate in the birthday of a great American, Abraham Lincoln. Mamma Mia, for George Washington, who was the father of his country, and I'm gonna think Abraham Lincoln was his favorite son. <laughs> Here in America, there's hundreds of things named after this great man. They got a Lincoln Memorial, Lincoln Nebraska, Lincoln a Laundry. You should have seen my shirts, Mamma Mia. Today they come back from a Lincoln Laundry, and in honor of a Lincoln's birthday, they free all the buttons. <laughs> Here in America, Mamma Mia, if you're very big, they put your face on the money. Well, they put the Mr. Lincoln on a five dollar bill. But to show you how fair Mr. Lincoln was, he's also put his face on a penny so the, so the poor people could see him too. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now, I'm going to my night school and I'm gonna hardly wait because we're gonna study more about this wonderful American. Oh yeah, and you'll ask the lady you asking me how I'm a look, how I'm a feel, and how much I'm away. Well, I'm a look good, I'm a feel good, and I'm away. Well, there's some place between 120 and 160, I'm not too sure. <laughs> that sounds crazy, huh? Well, don't worry, Mamma Mia. Right outside by the corner is a weighing machine, and I'm going to find out for you right now. Well, I'm going to step up on a scale, put in a penny. Hey, Mamma Mia, what's this? I'm away only two pounds. <laughs> That's no fair. The scale is say honest to weight, but I'm a think it's not so honest. Well, I'm gonna try another penny. Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. What are you doing, little banana nose? You weighing yourself before you take a haircut? Hey, Pasquale, is there something wrong with this scale? Look, and it says I'm away only two pounds. That's a wonderful, Luigi. Wonderful. Don't let anybody else get on. I gotta call my daughter Rosa. She should have weigh herself up. <laughs> Pasquale, stop it joking. But why the scale don't work again, huh? Uh, because you in Chicago now, that's a Toledo scale. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry. We're going to make it work. That's what I was going to do with another penny. Another penny? You crazy? No, you why? You trying to insult this scale? Luigi, don't you know in America there's only one way to treat a self-respecting machine that don't work? How? You kick it. <laughs> kick it, eh? You sure, Pasquale? Sure, I'm sure. Here, I kick it for you. There. See how I kick? Uh-huh. All right, then now you go. Be my guest. Pasquale, I'm afraid that's it. That's it doing something wrong. What are you talking about? Didn't you ever hear Americans saying how they do everything just for kicks? <laughs> All right. Go ahead, kick. <laughs> Ooh. What's the matter, Luigi? The scale Ooh. of kick back? Maybe I'm going to forget the whole thing. Well, are you going to be a coward? We're going to get that penny back. Jump. Jump? Go up from the down. Go ahead. All right. Nothing is going to happen, is it? Oh, that's a stubborn scale. Well, don't worry. Now I'm a man. You jump, and I'll kick. Come on. All right. Well, what do you know? We hit the jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. Look at how much a penny is. Is it four, five, seven, eight, ten? 15, 20, 22, is it? Here's a 24 pennies. That's what I, what I should do with them. What you should do? You stop the talking like such a greenhorn. You keep them, that's what. But, uh, but they're not the miner. I'm gonna give them back. 
Oh, sure, sure. I'm going to ask you, Phil. Uh, Mr. Scale, my friend Luigi here, he just <laughs> found some money dropped out of your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like it back, maybe? Pardon me? Oh, <laughs> You'd like to jump up and down on him for a few minutes. <laughs> oh, Pasquale, stop it joking. Those are pennies they're not to mind. Oh, you talking like a maroon. <laughs> well, the first lesson I gotta learn you about America is always to be honest, but if there's no cops around, it's every man for himself. <laughs> oh, no, Pasquale, you can't mean this. In America, I'm gonna learn to respect other people's property, and they're gonna respect me. I'm a learn oh, that... stop, stop. If I want to hear this kind of talk, I go to the park and stop by the nearest soapbox. Well, well, well what am I going to do? Do what you want. I want to forget it, the whole thing. Hey, listen, Luigi. How's about you and me and Rosa going for a little ride tomorrow morning on my Pierce Arrow? Eh? What do you say, little banana nose? Rosa's going to pack us a nice lunch and we drive along the lake, enjoy the scenery. Hey, I know, I know. Miss Spalding, she can tell me. Huh? Tell you what. What I should do with the 24 cents. Goodbye, Pasquale. I'm going to go to school. Oh, goodbye. But I could tell you, too. What? Put the money in the bank and live off of the interest. Quiet, class, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Horowitz? Here. Mr. Olson? Hey. Mr. Schultz? Never swap horses in midstream. <laughs> well, since you must be so smart, Mr. Schultz, who originally said never swap horses in midstream? Johnny Longer. Ach, smile, Miss Boyling. Of course, it was Abraham Lincoln. Of course. Now, class, I asked you to read the chapter on Lincoln in your history books. Are there any questions before I begin the lesson? Uh, Miss Spaulding. Yes. What is your question, Mr. Basco? If you stepped on a scale and 24 pennies had come out, what would you think? I would think you was weighing yourself on a slot machine. <laughs> Please, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Basco, we cannot have any more interruptions. Mr. Horowitz, you may tell us when Abraham Lincoln was born and when he died. Certainly. Abraham Lincoln died on April 15, 1865. Yes, and when was he born? You must be joking, Miss Spaulding. Uh, Mr. Horowitz, when was Lincoln born? On Lincoln's birthday. What else? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us the year, Mr. Horowitz. Oh, 1809. Go on, the month. February. The day. The 12th. All right. Now, Mr. Schultz. If you ask me what time it happened and who was the doctor, I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Olson, tell us something about Lincoln's boyhood. Uh, Miss Spaulding, there will be my ex Green pleasure to tell you. <laughs> there he goes. Old Faithful is about to spout some hot air. <laughs> well, he was born in a log cabin in Kentucky. Uh, during his youth, he worked on a boat. He owned a general store. He was a farmer, a rail splitter, a postmaster, a surveyor. Yeah, but he wanted a job with more security, so he became president. <laughs> Please, Mr. Schultz. That's very good, Mr. Olson. Now, Mr. Basco, you may tell us some of the nicknames that have been applied to Abraham Lincoln and tell us how he got to be known by those names. Well, uh, the Great Emancipator, because he's a free the slaves. Good. The Rail Splitter, because he's a helper to build the railroad. Yes. Honest Abe. Why was he called Honest Abe? Why? Yes, why was he called Honest Abe? Well, because he was honest and his name was Abe. And I defy anybody to give a more perfect answer. <laughs> Quiet, please. Miss Spalding, what would Honest Abe do with those 24 pennies, huh? I don't know about Honest Abe, but Honest Schultz would grab the 24 cents and fly to Mexico. <laughs> Stop that, please. Mr. Basco, for the last time, will you try to concentrate on your lesson? Well, yes, Miss Spalding, but, but I'm a thought I will, I'm, I'm given the right answer, because... Everybody knows that Lincoln was very honest, and that's what I'm going to be. That's why I ask you about it 24 cents. Well, there is one story connected with Lincoln's exceptional honesty. Mr. Olson, I'm sure you can tell it. How true, how true. But, Miss Falling, I have read dozens and dozens of books about Abraham Lincoln. Before I tell the story, perhaps you would like me to recite his Gettysburg address, or his second inaugural address, or his famous reply to Douglas. Or perhaps I could quote excerpts from his most famous letters. Oh, then why don't you just go home and bake Lincoln a birthday cake? <laughs> <laughs>
Miss Spalding, I'm gonna know a lot about the Lincoln, too. Since I'm gonna come to America, I'm, I'm gonna try to be like the Lincoln, and I study all about him. I'm, I memorize everything. Here, listen. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that a government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Wonderful. Wonderful. I tell you, friends, there never was a man like Lincoln. Oh, that was well done. Beautiful little Wiener Schmitz. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What are you thinking about, Mr. Basco? Well, I'm... I'm thinking about honest Abe, Miss Spalding. I know what the he would have do with the 24 cents. Oh, well, we better do something about that 24 cents or we got it another Dreyfus case. <laughs> Miss Spalding, I will answer Luigi and tell the Lincoln story. If I remember correctly, uh, Lincoln once walked ten miles on the road just to give back a customer some pennies she left by mistake. And that was the start of the Lincoln Highway. <laughs> <laughs> Mamma mia, is that really true, Miss Pauling? Did Mr. Lincoln really walk a ten miles to give back his some money? Well, according to legend, Mr. Basco, it happened while Lincoln was clerking in a general store at New Salem, Illinois. After a customer had paid for some merchandise and gone home, Lincoln found that he had accidentally shortchanged her by about six cents. And he's a, he's a walk to her house to give her back the money, huh? Yes, he walked about three miles and returned the six cents. Since then, our transportation has been two cents a mile. <laughs> <laughs> Mamma mia, now, now I know what I'm going to do with the 24 cents. What? I'm walking to the scale company to give it back. Before we return to life with Luigi, here's a suggestion that'll make your daily activities more pleasant and enjoyable. Carry a package of delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum with you. Chew a stick from time to time. It's really good to get your teeth into a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint. The lively spearmint flavor freshens your mouth and gives you a nice little lift. And the chewing itself gives you extra enjoyment and satisfaction. It makes whatever you're doing more enjoyable. So when you start out your day, tuck a package of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum in your purse or pocket. Be set to enjoy a stick of Wrigley Spearmint any time and any place. Get a few packages of refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma Mia, I made up my mind I'm going to walk to Toledo, Ohio to give back the 24 cents to the people who's on the scale. But why not, Mamma Mia? If Honest Abe could have done it, Honest Luigi's going to do it too. Just before, I'm going to look under my statue of Abraham Lincoln and I'm going to say, What do you think, Mr. President? You think I should have made that trip? Mr. Lincoln has said nothing. But the mamma mia, his whiskers was a point in a straight to Toledo. <laughs> so I'm got up early this morning. I'm a bundle up a good, and I'm ready to start on my walk when it is a come shoes. Luigi, my fellow boobers. Ach, Luigi, no, you ain't really going to Toledo. I'm a gone, shoes. Luigi, you are all for shimmered. <laughs> I just looked it up. Toledo is 242 miles from Chicago. 200 and... 42 miles? Yeah, and by the time you get there with that 24 cents, money is liable to be out of style. <laughs> uh, just, uh, anyway, I gotta walk. Goodbye. Luigi, wait. Do me one favor. What? Uh, Don't walk. It's so cold outside. You're gonna freeze to death. Promise me you're gonna grab some rides on the road. Well, I don't know worry about what? Grab some rides? That's right. Hitchhike. It's just as honest Lincoln would have done it in his day. And you'll be sure to get there. All right, Schultz. Then I'm going to hit a, hit a hike. It's <laughs> making no difference as long as I'm going to go there by myself and I give back the money. Well, well, look who we got here. 
Mr. Abraham Malenkil and Mr. Salami salesman. <laughs> Luigi, are you cooking spaghetti? No. Then what's this meatball doing here? <laughs> Schultz, I heard the Board of Health that condemned the one of you salamis yesterday. Look who's talking. Since you opened up your restaurant, three drugstores in this block make a living from your customers. <laughs> something. If ah, talking to you just depresses me, Pasquale. I'm going, Luigi. And remember, if you've got to go, don't walk. Take plenty of rides. Yes, Schultz, I'm a remember. Goodbye. Uh, big mouth. Well, I see you really got ready to walk to Toledo, eh? When do you expect to leave, little cabbage puss? As soon as you get away from that door. Well, I'm in no hurry. You know, Luigi, I think the strain of living in America is finally giving you a nervous breakdown. Why are you doing this crazy thing? Pasquale, what's the use to explain to you again how I'm a feel about the Lincoln? You don't even know who he was. Who, me? I don't know. For your information, Lincoln was such a famous American, they went and named the president after him. <laughs> <laughs> Pasquale, Lincoln was the president. That's what I said. Now, look, Luigi, put down the lunchbox and take off your hat, the air muffs, the coat, the rubbers, and let's go for that ride in my beautiful pierce arrow, just like I promised you. No, Pasquale, and please, let me go. Luigi, listen to me. It's a freezing cold outside, and Toledo is 3,000 miles from here. I looked it up. No, it's a 242. By airplane, maybe. Walking, it's longer. Pasquale, please, don't hold me back. Look, Luigi, be sensible. By not keeping that 24 cents, you acting like a bad American. Go ahead, ask anybody, see if they wouldn't have forget the whole thing. I did ask a Lincoln. That's enough for me. All right, go. Be like a Lincoln. Go to that scale company. You know what's going to happen? What? You're going to start another civil war between the Chicago and the Toledo. <laughs> Mamma mia, it's, it's getting a real cold. Brew. I must have walked the two miles. Hey, hey, mister. Hit you, please. Hit you, mister, please. Hit you. Hey, go on this way. Hey, mister. You gonna give me a little ride, please? I'm going up the shore drive. How far are you going? Toledo. Toledo Street? No, Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> Mamma mia, if, I'm, if I'm I had the money, I think it would have been better to hit you hiking a bus. <laughs> Mister, it's very nice of you to take me into your car. I'm driving east, so what's the difference? How come you're going so far as Toledo? Well, uh, it's a long story. I don't like to be nosy, just making conversation. Are you going to see your relatives? No. Business? No. Girl? No, I'm... I'm, I'm going to give back 24 cents. Huh? <laughs> sure. It's not my money. It belongs to the scale people. Scale people? I'm a step down it, as it said, two pounds. I'm a kick it, then I'm a jump on it, then it's 24 cents as it come out. And you're going to Toledo to return it? Yeah, sure. I'm a... I'm a want to be like Abraham Lincoln. Hey, why you stop? Because I think you're more like Napoleon. <laughs> Your truck is a ride very nice, mister. I'm, I appreciate it very much that, that you stop for me, and I'm going to tell everybody what nice and careful people truck drivers are. How far are you going, friend? <laughs> uh, well, uh, that uh, depends. Depends on what? <laughs> it depends if, uh, if you like Abraham Lincoln. Do I like Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> Friend, I'm not sure about that guy. <laughs> but, uh... If you're talking to me, mister, my... My name is Basco. No, I'm talking to my mother. <laughs> mother... Remember how you used to put me on your knee? 
and recite the Emancipation Proclamation. <laughs> Mother, <laughs> you'd be proud to hear me recite it now. I'm, I'm a glad you like him, Mr. Lincoln. They don't make him like that no more, friend. <laughs> Only Lincoln could have said them words. Don't give up the ship. <laughs> How far you say you go, friend? Well, I was, uh, I was... Uh, what, what do you think about the Lincoln to get his bag of drugs? Uh, do you know about the, the government for the people? I know. Government for the people, by the people, at the people, with the people. No, that's... Uh, <laughs> All try to correct Lincoln, friend. I'm sorry. How far you say he was good? Oh, not, not so far, uh, I was a... Uh, uh, what else do you remember about the Lincoln uh, from, from your school, huh? Oh, everything. I remember one story where Lincoln worked a hundred miles in the rain to give an old lady back her umbrella. I think that was uh, three miles for six cents. Please. I like to remember it my way. <laughs> sure, sure. Main thing is, uh, he's, he's made the walk, huh? Yeah. Mother! <laughs> you don't find people like that no more. No more. How far you say he was going, friend? Well, uh, mister, I, I, I think you're going to understand. I'm a donor what the Lincoln is a dead. You're going to run for president? <laughs> no, I'm going to give back the 24 cents, which I'm a got for nothing when I'm a step on a scale. You're going to give back 24 cents? Sure, that's why I'm going to Toledo, Ohio. He's a just like a Mr. Lincoln, huh? Ah? All right, all right, all right. I, I know, Mr. Stop at the track. I'm, I'm going to get out. Mama, 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 never felt this so calling in my life, walking and walking and, and walking. And, oh, excuse, excuse me, mister. Is, well, what the town I'm in? Huh? Sorry, I'm in a hurry. Mommy, I'm, I'm going to raise it to that. If, if only I'm, I'm going to warm up some place. Ooh, I'm going to feel like one bigger piece of ice. I think I'm going to better sit down by, by, by this doorway and... and Rest a little bit, huh? Oh, it's just so good to sit down. Maybe I'm a better tech tech. Little, 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 little nap. Ooh. Little, little nap. Rosa! 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 Did you look? Is he back in the store yet? No, Papa. Oh, poor Luigi. It's so cold out. He's going to die. He might even get pneumonia. I don't care if he gets a bronchitis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Papa, maybe you ought to go look for him. Well, what am I going to say to people? Excuse me, did you see Abraham Lincoln pass by here? <laughs> oh, why did I have to bring that stumping jackass to America? I should have imported a Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Stop, Ross. I could have killed myself. Poor little banana nose. Why did I show him how to kick that scale? Hey, what's that? It's a police car, Papa, by his door. Uh, Mr. Pasquale? Oh, Papa, he's got Luigi. Look. Oh, look on him. Uh, say, I wouldn't let this fellow wander too far from home. We found him asleep in a hallway about 18 miles outside of town. By morning, he would have been a goner. Oh, Papa, aren't you happy? Quiet, Rosa. Well, Lincoln, say something. <laughs> Hello, Pasquale. If I were you, I'd put this man to bed and give him some hot drinks. Good night. Thanks, officer. Good night. <laughs> Honest to Luigi, the smile and the pettyback you give her. 
What happened, Mr. Lincoln? I see your beard is missing. Guess you had a close to shave, huh? <laughs> oh, Papa, stop. He looks all so bad. Serves him right. But from now on, Mr. Big Shots, you're going to do like I say. Come on, you get us some sleep, warm up. And then we're going for that drive into my piss arrow. <laughs> Luigi, Papa's waiting in the car. All right, Derosha. I'm ready. Well, here comes a Mr. Lincoln. A nice and warm at this time. All dressed up, feeling good and comfortable. Ready for the drive? Ready for the drive. All right, to get in the car and don't tell me no more about Lincoln. We're going to Lake Michigan for a sightsee and a drive. All right. But, Pasquale, I'm going to tell you, I'm... I'm a feeling terrible. You feel it terrible, huh? Lincoln means so much to you, huh? Yes, he does, Pasquale. Hey, Pasquale, why, why are you going this way? Yeah, Papa, isn't Lake Michigan the other way? Oh, shut up, both of you. We, uh, we're going to someplace else. Someplace else? So where? Toledo, Ohio. We're going to give back the 24 cents. You satisfied, honest to Luigi? Yes. Mr. Lincoln. Well, the mom I had a beautiful six hours of driver to Toledo, and I'm going to give back the money to the scaler company. Pasquale says he's happy about the one thing, that I'm a dinner step on a California made a scale. <laughs> <laughs> so now, Mamma Mia, I finish you my letter, and to finish you telling you all about me, I'm now 142 pounds. Pasquale is just away to me, but he's took no chances. He's a put to me on his bathroom scale. Your loving son, Luigi Basco, the little immigrant. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they want to remind you that chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is an inexpensive, enjoyable way to sweeten your breath and help keep your mouth feeling fresh and clean. You see, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is made to give you real, long-lasting chewing enjoyment. It's smooth and good to chew on. The flavor is delicious and satisfying. And at the same time, it's a long-lasting aid to pleasant mouth freshness. So chew a few sticks of Wrigley's Spearmint every day, as millions do. See how good it makes your mouth feel and see how enjoyable that pleasant chewing is. Get a few packages of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. Pat Burton is associate producer. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. <laughs> J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conried as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Schiff as Miss Spaulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Olsen, and Ed Max as the truck driver. The music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin, Mrs. Charles Lyon, this was CBS Radio Network. <laughs>